Cybersecurity is a huge secular growth trend. And two of the best stocks to play this for pure play endpoint security are CrowdStrike and Sentinel One. Now, both of these stocks have been under pressure. Are either of these stocks a buy? Are they both a buy? Let's dig into it today. I'll give you my thoughts. I'm gonna go specifically into the reasons why Sentinel One stock sold off, some of the opportunities, some of the risk, and some of the potential rewards. Sentinel One's trading right now just over $15 a share. It's up 1.72% today. Over the past month, it's down about 20%. Year to date, the stock is actually up 5.42%. Over the past year, it's down almost 35%. And on a max chart, it's down 65.55% all time. The all time highs for Sentinel One, it topped out in November of 2021. Like a lot of these growth stocks, it was a $76 stock. This is under a $5 billion market cap. It's $4.46 billion right now. 52 week low is $12.43. The 52 week high, $30. So what happened to Sentinel One? Why did it sell off? So shares of Sentinel One created more than 30% in extended trading. This was after earnings. The company reported a mixed quarterly performance and slashed its full year revenue guidance. The company also revealed a restatement to its annual recurring revenue ARR due to a change in methodology and correction of historical inaccuracies. In addition, the company laid off about 5% of its employees. So it crashed down to $13.20 post-market. Earnings per share were negative 15 cents. So this is not a profitable company at this point. That that did beat Essence by two cents. And revenue growth was up 70% year over year to $133.4 million, but it did miss slightly by 3.21 million. So the company's annual recurring revenue increased by 75% to $563.6 million. However, that adjustment I mentioned earlier to its methodology and correction of historical inaccuracies resulted in a one-time reduction of 27 million, about 5% of ARR. And here's a quote here from leadership. Despite many underlying business strengths, our Q1 top line growth did not meet our expectations. Let's hear it directly from the CEO. Joining us to discuss the quarter, his outlook on the cyber landscape and the surge in AI related cyber attacks, Tomar Weingarten is the CEO of Sentinel One. Tomar, thanks for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. And listen, analysts are pointing out you still saw impressive billings growth, if we want to call it that. But there were also a couple of company specific issues and accounting problem, among others. So talk us through what happened here. Yeah, I mean, as, as you mentioned, you know, very impressive growth. Still, we grew um, 75 percent, you know, on, on our top line. Um, obviously, that's one of the fastest growing, you know, companies on the public market today. That said, you know, we fell short of our own expectations of what we felt we could do this quarter. Um, so we're obviously disappointed, but not discouraged. Uh, we also managed to improve our margins significantly. And generally, I think what you're seeing is our transition towards more efficient growth, uh, more focus on profitability, but there's no denying that the macro effects are, you know, obviously putting pressure on the business. Um, we need to perform better, and some of it is due to our own execution. Yeah. Um, all in all, you know, most of the fundamentals are intact. You know, we're working very hard to make sure that we can give reliable forecasts. Um, to us, I mean, a lot of it doesn't come from the lack of demand. It does come from our, you know, own lack of ability to execute better in a predictable manner. Um, as we kind of traverse these opportunities, obviously with deal deferrals, deal compressions, um, sales cycle elongation, I think at our scale, it's a bit harder um, to, you know, to take enough buffer to mask all of those, as you can see with you know, some other larger companies. And obviously what caught us a bit by surprise was um, the downtick in consumption that, you know, is a part of our business. And we saw it sharply um, decrease in terms of log analytics, data ingestion, um, you know, customers are looking to right size what they put um, into the platform, what they store. We see that with other consumption players. So all in all, we, we need more predictability and we'll work hard to make sure that's the case going forward. Now this is the earnings transcript. There's a few highlights in here that I want to cover just quickly. One, it talks about here, if you look at a three to five year time horizon, let's play this out. If we're a profitable company in three to five years and still growing at reasonable growth rates, this is a far more valuable company than it is today. And we're not relaxing on technology. We're continuing to advance that. We've been a technological leader and we're going to continue to do that. So we look at this as still early innings in cybersecurity 
for us. And of course, they had to talk about artificial intelligence, AI. Artificial intelligence is among the most disruptive technologies of our time, has the potential to scale cybersecurity in a completely new way. I also think there's a chance it could disrupt cybersecurity companies as we know them today. It talks about how from early on, they developed a fully automated AI-based security platform. Now, there was a question specifically to the CEO on CNBC about this, and let's hear it. What's your sense about the moat around your business and, frankly, the moat around so many of the other uh, businesses in your space? And the reason I ask that is in the context of AI, do the incumbents win because of the enterprise relationships they already have and whatever AI you can build upon them? Or is it that a new entrant can come into this market, given uh, what AI can do, and, and effectively disrupt everybody? Yeah, I think it's a great question, and and I think you you can't ignore you know the the reach that some of these legacy players um, have, and and that's obviously an advantage. Um, I do think that the um, the ability with AI to build a disruptive application um, is is there. I think it does work in two directions. One, um, a lot of the capabilities that you see today, uh, definitely the more niche nascent capabilities. Are just going to go away. They're going to be obfuscated away. And I think that generally, um, instead of thinking about something like cybersecurity in silos and in different segments, you're going to start looking at complete enterprise-wide um, capability sets. So I think it's a bit hard to predict. I think the large players, you know, will constantly have that advantage in their reach, um, especially if you think about someone like Microsoft. If you believe that cybersecurity is about a $100 billion market opportunity, opportunity for customers, for companies like us, Microsoft has about $20 billion revenue in security. That's about a fifth of that market. So there's still a lot to gain for, you know, all the all the other platform players. So they talk about their AI-based approach delivers best-in-class autonomous protection. Now, one thing I want to point out from the earnings call as well is they talked about how they have some recurring revenue. And I think that raised a few red flags from analysts. So I dug into that a little bit deeper. So Sentinel One's products with consumption base, this really comes from an acquisition. They acquired this company for $155 million back in February of 2021, but it's only 10%. It's less than 10% of annual recurring revenue. Going a little bit deeper on AI, they call it Purple AI a major leap forward in cybersecurity innovation. And this is in a letter to the shareholders on that last earnings report. We developed Purple AI to supercharge users to monitor and operate all security data, boost productivity and scale operations. So Tomar Weingarten, the CEO and co-founder of Sentinel One, this is on LinkedIn, I'm actually connected with him, a first connection. Meet Purple, this is a couple months ago. It's a revolution in how you do cybersecurity. Powered by multiple layered AI algorithms for detecting anomalies and a security trained L. LLM, of course, large language model. It processes all your security data across all your products to allow your team's unprecedented interaction, insights, and automation across the enterprise. Cybersecurity will never be the same. And you can see the demo here on your screen kind of going through some of that. Pretty interesting stuff, and I think this is really in early innings. So this is the Sentinel One platform, broaden XDR platform with identity. That's the company they acquired, and that provides identity security, protection, visibility, and deception. And you can see storyline here in the middle and you've got the Sentinel. So you've got everything from Windows, cloud servers, storage, network, sandbox, third-party vendor ecosystems, and so on. That feeds up through storyline into endpoint security, security operations, IT operations, services, and that identity security. Now, CrowdStrike looks very similar, right? Very similar to what we just looked at. Endpoint security and XDR, cloud security, threat intelligence. They also have identity protection, security, and IT ops, and observability. Now, in that previous clip, the CEO talked about you know, Microsoft and competition with Microsoft. One thing that CrowdStrike does a better job of, in my opinion, is really the marketing and just giving the message to us as shareholders, as investors. And CrowdStrike actually has a comparison on their investor relations page comparing themselves to Microsoft. I couldn't find anything like this similar on Sentinel One's investor relations page. Eight out of 10 times when an enterprise customer tests, they chose CrowdStrike over Microsoft. So even though Microsoft is the huge behemoth, it's the elephant in the room. A lot of times when you look at these cloud SaaS type names, if you're
you're a CIO, you're generally going to use best of breed solutions and combine them together. And it's very easy to do in today's IT environment. So you might be using Microsoft, but also use CrowdStrike and use lots of other vendors that we talk about, the Datadogs, the Zscalers, the Cloudflares, and so on. And to piggyback off that statement, you know, they also share their customer base with you with CrowdStrike and not so much with Sentinel One. What we do know with Sentinel One is they are more focused on SMB. Now, in the earnings call, they like to talk about how they're dealing with Fortune 10s and so on, but they don't give us this snapshot like CrowdStrike does. And I think this is powerful. So as of January 31st, 2023, CrowdStrike has 556 of the Global 2000, 70 of the Fortune 100, 270 of the Fortune 500, and 15 of the top 20 US banks. So let's look a little bit more closely at Sentinel One and CrowdStrike, some valuation metrics. So neither of these companies have a PE ratio. Again, Sentinel One, it's right now about a $4.41 billion market cap. Short interest is about 7%. So Sentinel One, price to sales is about nine. Price to book, 2.72. Earnings per share right now is negative 15 cents. Now, generally with software, recurring revenue, software as a service, we like to look at EV NTM revenue. So that multiple for Sentinel One is about a 7X right now. If you look at companies like Snowflake, it's over a 20X. Now CrowdStrike's price to sales, the market's paying a premium for this. Price to sales ratio right now, 13.83. Price to book, expensive, 21.25. If we look at that EV NCM revenue, that number on CrowdStrike, it's around 11X versus a 7X for Sentinel One. Now what's interesting with CrowdStrike is it shows PE for next year's estimate at 46.7. So they're getting very close to that profitability and earnings. And that is one of the major arguments for the bears with Sentinel One is they don't really have a clear path to profitability. On the earnings call, they're talking about three to five years if we're profitable. So when you look at this type of market where investors are really trying to focus on companies with that free cash flow, with those really healthy balance sheets, lots of cash on hand, CrowdStrike's gonna have an edge in that area. CrowdStrike is also significantly larger. So instead of under a $5 billion market cap in Sentinel One, you're talking about a 30 $4 billion market cap with CrowdStrike. Now, one thing to note here is Sentinel One. If you look at some of the metrics, so revenue, operating margin, and free cash flow. So in the purple here, you've got revenue. You can see it's growing steadily upwards. The free cash flow has actually gone down a little bit. So you're at negative 188.82 million. Within that operating margin, TTM in the orange has actually spiked significantly. So I've been talking about these two companies for the last couple of years, comparing Sentinel One and CrowdStrike. And I've told you time and time again, that CrowdStrike to me is the best of breed when you think of endpoint cybersecurity. And when Sentinel One stock was 50 and $60, I told you not to touch it with a 10 foot pole. CrowdStrike for me has always been, you know, buy it closer to 125, 150 or less has been the message for a long time, dollar cost average. So if you're buying CrowdStrike, you're probably neutral. Maybe you're slightly green, depending on when you bought it, especially if you bought heavy towards the lows. With Sentinel One, there's a good chance if you own it, unless you bought it recently, you might be bag holding it. But what you care about on this video is which stock should you buy right now? And we're going to get to that here soon. So back to the Sentinel One earnings transcript. We're bringing innovative technology to a $100 billion addressable market. So Sentinel One's telling us they think their addressable market is $100 billion. Now CrowdStrike is showing us $158 billion. So $58 billion more than Sentinel One. And this is telling you CY26. So we're talking about much sooner than what Sentinel One's talking about. And up next, we have the magic quadrants that we talk about all the time on the channel. So you can see Microsoft up there in the leaders, CrowdStrike, and then Sentinel One. And so completeness of vision is going to be on that bottom going to the right. And then the ability to execute is going upward here. So Microsoft has the highest ability to execute and CrowdStrike has a little bit more completeness of vision. Sentinel One is really a close third place to those two. And if you look at the cost of cybercrime, this is in trillions of dollars. And this is going from 2018 to 2027. You can see here in 2023, we're around 12 trillion dollars. That's the cost of cybercrime. So this isn't total addressable market. This is just cost of cybercrime. And that's all cybercrime. It's not just focused on endpoint security, but it's just a paint a picture. 2027, we're nearing $25 trillion for that cost of cybercrime. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is a huge total addressable market. It's a huge secular growth trend, a mega trend. Now I showed you the magic quadrant and showed you that CrowdStrike is a little bit more of a leader. It's more best in breed if you're looking for a laser focused endpoint security investment. But if you look at the ratings on Gardas from Pure Insights, out of 1,195 ratings for CrowdStrike and 1,000 ratings for Sentinel One, they're both 4.8 out of five stars. 
So you can see ease of use 4.8, cloud-based management 4.8, prevention, a little bit of an edge here on CrowdStrike 4.9 versus 4.8. EDR functionality, both 4.8. You can see on your screen. Now, one of the observations studying both of these companies for a while is that if you look at Sentinel One, they have a much better partner network. So resellers. Now that certainly can be a positive because essentially you're having big companies like Accenture and so on that can resell your product to their customers. Now the flip side argument to that, if you know my background, I worked in software sales for over a decade. And one thing you'll know coming from that world is it's very competitive when you're selling. So if you have a sales force that lives, breathes and eats your product, they're gonna know it inside and out and they have an advantage when they're trying to sell. Now the partner ecosystem will make it more simplistic and a lot of you know a lot of times companies will just go along with it because it's simple and you can make that same argument with microsoft they're already working with microsoft have one you know throat to choke and not have to work with more than one vendor now if somebody's truly looking for best of breed and they're doing their homework and their due diligence as a cio and executive leadership you're probably still going to compare microsoft crowdstrike and sentinel one and if all three of those are invited to do a presentation to that boardroom crowdstrike has a much stronger sales team it's all they know and they're much better at selling it. So you can really flip that argument however you want to. I personally would prefer the CrowdStrike approach where they have a sales team that's going out, boots on the ground and selling the product. They know the products very, very well. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at a chart of both Sentinel One and CrowdStrike. And then I'm gonna give you my final analysis and tell you which one I think is the better stock to buy. Before I do that, I need to announce this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you'd like to see the 10 best stocks to buy now, visit fool.com forward slash fired up wealth. A reminder, guys, Fool doesn't tell me what to make, what to tell you guys. They're a great partner. Check those guys out. I also encourage you to join our private community, Patreon Discord. You can visit patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that bell for notifications. My goal this year was to get 40,000 subscribers. We're almost at 41,000. Let's get to 50,000 subscribers in 2023. And if this video is helpful, you can return the favor by dropping me a like and dropping a comment. It helps out the algo and I appreciate it very much. Every single Wednesday in Patreon Discord, we do something called Chart Day. So we we look at QQQ, we look at 20 individual stock tickers that are chosen by the community every single Wednesday at nine o'clock a.m. Eastern. We do that live and it's recorded. Anytime you see orange, that's a previous chart day. So you're gonna see orange in your screen. You're not gonna see yellow. Yellow would normally be today's chart day. Instead, I'm just gonna talk through it with you. If you wanna join our private community and join us for things like chart day every single Wednesday morning, again, visit patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth. Check it out. So previously in the private community, we talked about buying, you know, target 10 to $14 possible DCA. And this is when the stock was more expensive than those levels. Now it triple bottomed really in that 12 to $13 range. And it bounced up nicely to $19, had a little bit of a pullback and popped up to about $22 a share. And then we had earnings and it dropped back to 1243. So it's retested the same area, 12 to $13, four times now. And a lot of times when you see a stock get shaken out, when you're really trying to shake out all the weak hands, you're gonna see a retest several times until eventually they're all shaken out. Now, last time we said 50-50 ball leans up, needs to break 1640 for upside. Could see $20 with time. It got washed out hard again, four times bottomed at the $13 area. And we did a video not too long ago where we said we liked it $15, $16. And most Discord buys have really been that I've seen, you know, $12, $13, $14, most of the buys. Somebody asked me to do chart day before earnings. And I said we could see $25 or break any time. Earnings are tomorrow. So we looked at this the day before June 1st. And I said, we shouldn't be talking about it because the earnings are gonna make the stock pop or drop, not the chart. And that exactly is what happened. Earnings basically caused a sharp, sharp drop and it dropped from $22 to $12.43. So you've got a huge gap here and it's gonna take some time to fill that in and you're gonna see some volatility. This is not gonna go up in a straight line. I think for me on Sentinel One, I'm probably looking at $15 or less dollar cost averaging and I'm probably thinking three or more years as a long-term investment. Now CrowdStrike's trading right now about $145 a share. And we recently did a video, top stocks to buy for June. And I said, I like this stock $150 or less dollar cost average. Now the stock popped really hard from basically May. It was $115. It popped up to 161 and then it pulled back. And just on Wednesday, so this is a couple days ago, somebody asked about CrowdStrike on chart day. I said, same as YouTube video. I prefer $150 or less DCA. Upside prevails as long as 143 support. Right now it's still holding 143. It's $145 and 11 cents. It could certainly break down and go lower than that. You 
you can see this next line here is about $138 and that's close to that 50 day. Now the key target area was $115 and that was in early May. And this was in kind of a slanted bull flag said it could break either way, you know, 163 in the upside, it's broke down. The market overall has cooled off and sold off. Now for the longest time, I said CrowdStrike, you know, don't pay over $125. But if you look at CrowdStrike and you zoom the chart, it's been trading really in these levels for a long time. And that does, it doesn't make an automatic buy or anything like that. But if you look at how much it's grown over those, those couple of years where it's really been kind of trading in a range, it's really grown into that valuation quite a bit. And it's one of the least expensive areas when you look at historic valuation that we've seen for CrowdStrike. So that's why my new target really is $150 or less. And it certainly could go to 125 or something like that. That would be an opportunity, in my opinion, to add more shares. So which stock is the better buy? Sun01 or CrowdStrike? Now, if you followed the channel for a while, you know that I'm very bullish on CrowdStrike long-term. It's one of my higher conviction SaaS cloud companies. Now, with that said, I think both Sun01 and CrowdStrike do have some disruptive technology risks, especially when you think about artificial intelligence. Even the Sun01 CEO directly told us that it's, it's a potential risk. And what does that look like when you think of quantum computing? You know, and that might take some time, but you think about quantum computing where it can crack any password in seconds. What does the future of cybersecurity even look like? So I would say that both of these companies have risks. They're not, you know, home run, no brainer, grand slam type investments. If I were to choose one personally, it'd be CrowdStrike and I like it $150 or less DCA. Now with that said, I actually think Sutton One is an opportunity as well, $15 or less, but I think it is more of a speculative investment compared to CrowdStrike. Both of these are high risk and for a lot of investors, both would probably be considered spec. One just a little bit higher spec than the other. I would put CrowdStrike in that growth basket and I'd probably put Sutton One in spec. I know a lot of you probably have it in growth and I think that's okay. Just understand that it's more speculative growth in my opinion than CrowdStrike is. Now with that said, we looked at the market caps earlier for both. CrowdStrike is around $34 billion market cap and Sentinel One is, is less than $5 billion. It's around $4.5 billion in the market cap. So I think there's just more risk reward with a Sentinel One. It has more room to grow. And they talked about a $100 billion addressable market. Let's just say to keep it simple, let's say it's a $5 billion market cap. And Sentinel One made a statement, hey, if we can get a fifth of that addressable market, we're doing pretty well. So basically that's $20 billion and they're under a $5 billion now. It's a 4X opportunity in the eyes of Sentinel One leadership. And you could argue it's going to be much harder for CrowdStrike to 4X, to go from a $35 billion market cap to $140 billion market cap versus a $5 billion market cap to say a $20 billion market cap. And those aren't reasons just to go invest. It's just really trying to give you some simple logic here about the risk reward opportunity. So I have higher conviction in CrowdStrike, but I think both are opportunities. And if you have a higher risk tolerance, Sentinel One might be the better choice. So I hope this video is helpful, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like, drop a comment, have a great rest of your day. Take care.